Hello and uh, welcome to Tuesday, May 24th, Board of Education meeting. Um, get this right one of these days. If we can begin with the pledge. Melissa, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Of course. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, if we could, uh, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence to honor the victims in the tragedy that occurred at the top supermarket in Buffalo. And um, I just recently learned of a tragic event in Texas a little while ago, so our hearts go out to them all. Thank you. Sorry, just a little difficult. Um, trying to get, trying to get that done. Sorry. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive. Um, may I have a motion to move to executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular individual? I'll motion. Jody, may I have a second? A second. Pete, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, those opposed? No. And uh, Jan will join us when she gets here. Thank you. We'll be back shortly. Yeah, we're back. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your patience on that. Um, if we let you move on to number two, the superintendent's report, please. And I'll keep it brief. Um, expecting some applause after saying that. But uh, <laughs> welcome, everyone, and thanks, everybody, for being here. All of our students that are in pig classes, you're going to enjoy this board meeting. This is one of our better ones. We've got two great presentations tonight, although Mr. Brinker's not wearing a jacket that jumps out across the room at you, <laughs> as he usually does. So... Um, just a few things I just wanted to uh, update everyone on. So just today, actually, uh, the uh, Department of Education actually canceled the U.S. history uh, exam. There was a brand new exam, and I just uh, something we found out this afternoon. Uh, basically, they were concerned about some content in the exam. I guess they did it a couple, made it a couple of years ago. Uh, went to great lengths to talk about the experts that they worked to create it, but I just I think they felt in, in light of uh, some recent events that took place, uh, the recent shootings over at Tops in Buffalo is what they actually specifically referenced. They thought that some of the material might upset people, so they, they canceled the exam at this point. They have to now go to the Board of Regents to get a request to basically have it exempted uh, from the students, which I assume is probably going to happen. I don't want to speak for the Board of Regents, so... Uh, but it looks like they're just going to average out the students uh, for marking periods is what uh, my understanding of the situation is for this. So the exam was supposed to be next Wednesday. So uh, now that's going to be a uh, full day of attendance for our high school students. Originally, it wasn't going to be because the exam was taking place. So any, any questions on that? That's, again, that's brand new just today. So. Uh, just real quick, too, I got to go to, uh, so Erie One BOCES, as some may be aware, uh, has a little bit of a waiting list right now, about 200 students, not from this district. Apparently in this district, we do a really nice job of scooping up all the spaces before anybody else can register. We have two very proud high school principals and school counselors about that, but so they have been looking for more space. Uh, and uh, actually, I just visited the CalSpan building last week, which is right across the street from the airport over on Genesee Street. Just a phenomenal space. They are completely renovating it at no cost. Uh, and BOCES is going to lease the space. And they're going to have like gaming, like, uh, like uh, training, like you can go to like, you know, video game production and stuff. They're going to have all kinds of great uh, CTE opportunities for kids. So it's just, it's, it's going to be really exciting. They're going to actually bust the kids over from the Harkness Center, which is not far from there. It's right around the corner. Uh, so just very exciting. Um, they also said they actually, I think it's 25,000 square feet. And they actually have the potential to expand into another space as well in the same building. Um, so it's exciting. So more opportunities for kids to be able to access CTE program. Uh, Jan, you know, this one's for you. So I've been working, talking to Sue Whalen in our food services department. So apparently that, that piece of legislation is still uh, waiting to be, uh, I guess, voted on in terms of free meals for next year. There is a possibility that we may be able to work something out for this summer as well. Uh, so she found, first the information she got was that we could, but it had to be consumed on site. And then 
the person at the state education department said that may not be the case. So she's she's still working on this right now. So, so but just I. <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. More to come. So anyway, so uh, that's all I have for this evening. So again, I said I'd be brief, and I'm trying to stick to that. Are there any questions that anybody had in any of that? Okay. Okay. I told you I'd be fast. Great. Excellent. Um, just gonna take a moment. Board president's report. Um, we had our uh, school budget vote last week. I think it feels, feels like it was a long time ago. Um, last Tuesday, and we had the elections. I want to thank everybody for coming out and voting. Again, I, I big big thing I'm looking for is to increase the numbers that we have every year. So if you came out this year and voted, bring five people with you next year, please. I'd like to see more of the community involved in the vote, um, the voting process. But I do want to thank everybody who was involved. I want to thank everybody who ran, and I want to. I don't think we have um, any of the candidates that were here. Again, thank you to Vince for um, uh, being on the board this upcoming year. Thank you to Peter for your three years. And um, again, thank you to everyone else who took the time to run and be involved. I really enjoyed that day um, being with the candidates and being with the board at the count and everything. So if you're ever interested in spending a day with us, come out and hang out every year at the uh, budget vote. It's a lot of fun. And again, bring people out to vote. That's all I have to say. And we'll move on to... The Assistant Superintendent's report. Dr. Spony. What's that? Everybody's wearing blue and yellow ties pretty much. <laughs> not you either. Yeah, now she's making you feel awkward. Sorry, Matt's not wearing one either. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, just I'll also be brief in, in the spirit. Uh, we uh, had our launch of our new uh, attendance and subsystem. Uh, I'd like to thank some of the leaders here that helped with that implementation and just transition. Uh, I think it went very smooth. Uh, our IT was also a big help in, in just meeting with some folks in different departments, helping them get set up, whether they choose to use the app or, or access it online. Uh, it's gone very well. I've gotten some positive feedback on it and uh, we will be adding some more components to it. Uh, allowing staff to be able to access their 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 accruals, uh, and our sub and our subs uh, have given us some good feedback too. So we're excited about that. It just makes a, a better uh, experience for people uh, working for us as substitutes and for our employees should they have to take some time off. I uh, was had the pleasure of being able to participate in our final new teacher academy meeting this year uh, over at the West Senior Auditorium. It was awesome. Uh, Kim McCartan uh, and uh, WISTA collaborated to have just a little refreshments and offered some reflective questions to our new teachers ending their first year uh, and, and quite a year that they had in transitioning students back and it was just nice to see, although they look very young, uh, it was nice to see <laughs> our new teachers uh, there and be able to reflect on their year and, and maybe, you know, what they've learned. Uh, I was looking at some of the post-it notes, this little gallery walk and, you know, uh, start with, you know, uh, establish my rules a little bit sooner, stuff like that, you know, some stuff that I remember just working through in, in, in first years of teaching. Um, but overall, uh, we are in the middle of our transfer process with our staff and the variety of positions that were added and people being able to transfer in and out, that's been going very well. Uh, big shout out, obviously, to Kelly Conti and our principals that work collaboratively on that. Uh, there's a lot of detail with that. And uh, just looking forward to a successful end of the school year. Any questions for me? Thanks, everyone. Ms. Persico? Hello, everyone. Just a couple of quick updates. Our ELA curriculum audit wrapped up today with our kindergarten grade level. So we should have an updated report within the next couple of weeks from our associate from BOCES. Um, we did recently have an update from teacher to teacher that was provided to everybody. Um, and it's interesting to see that some of the points were corroborated between both versions. So the ELA curriculum audit as well as the teacher to teacher update. I think what resonates is that there is a varied implementation of Readers Writers Workshop and that teachers want professional development and need that extra support in implementing that. So um, I think what was highlighted was the need to focus on writing instruction across all grades. Um, and it, it is happening in our classrooms, but not in a workshop style model. 
so it's more whole group at this point. Um, the need for vertical and horizontal alignment is something that is wanted and desired by our teachers. And so we are um, taking all of this feedback into account based on whether it was a classroom visit or the teacher survey information. Um, elementary principals and myself will be meeting next week to go through all of this feedback, review it, and then work to formulate a plan for professional development for next year, and which will begin with an opportunity for all of our teachers of Readers Writers Workshop for a summer literacy conference. So we will be detailing all of the information with that opportunity within the next couple of weeks for teachers to have the ability to sign up for that uh, literacy conference. May 6th, Data Day, uh, we had our teachers, that was our last one of the year, reviewed student writing samples, speaking of writing, using the RAD protocol. That was one thing that the teacher-to-teacher -teacher consultants found, that RAD was alive and well throughout all of the classrooms, grade levels, and elementary and middle. They didn't visit the high schools, teacher-to-teacher, uh, -teacher, since it was more a focus on Reader's Writer's Workshop, but they were impressed with the alignment and, and the communication and the language of the RAD throughout their classroom visits. So we're going to work to uh, kind of interweave those two concepts together. But the District Literacy Committee will get together to review all of the reflection forms that teachers submitted as a result of that <laughs> May 6th day-to-day. And we will use that feedback to make modifications to the graphic organizers that we use and also to the rubric that we use at elementary, middle, and high. On May 13th, three of our district librarians and I attended a library conference at Erie One BOCES. It was all about collection, selection, and objection, especially in this day and age where you have um, books that are being challenged in and around the community across the nation. So it really focused on those things and a student's right to read, have voice, intellectual freedom. So our librarians are going to be doing some summer work around policy regarding objection as well as the digital literacy components of the new standards. Um, we will be also forming a committee here at the district level for um, any such challenges that may come our way. I also wanted to just give a shout out to Kim McCartan for a new teacher academy. Uh, yesterday it was a great opportunity for our teachers to get together and have that collegiality. It was nice to see so many people in the audience where in years past we haven't had too many. So um, that is a quick update since the last time we met. Any questions? Carmen, I have a quick question. Sure. The ELA curriculum audit, mm -hmm. is that just for kindergarten or is it No, it was K-12 and it started back in the fall and it just finally concluded today. Okay, so it's a full K-12 through Yes, audit. and we should have an updated report I would think within the next couple of weeks. I'll share that with the board as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. Ms. Fowler? Good evening. Um, just kind of picking back from what Dr. Cervoni and Mrs. Persico said, um, it's that time of year where we're starting to wrap things up. Um, this week we have an opportunity to meet with our related service departments, which includes our speech therapists, our occupational therapists, physical therapists, and our teacher of the visually impaired, to really take a look and, and reflect on the work that has been done, not only this year but in the past years, and really identify um, what has gone well and what are some areas of improvement or ways in which that we can grow and develop plans moving forward. Um, this is the first opportunity that we're able to get together in person. I'm really looking forward to it, to getting the whole group together and really start planning and looking looking at what our needs are and how we can grow um, as a department, excuse me, as a department and how we can support our students. Um, the other thing I wanted to share was I um, had the opportunity to attend a, a workshop, a four-day series workshop that started back in March with our best team, which includes our social worker and our school psychologist, part of our new social, um, behavioral, emotional, social support team. And really the workshop focused on developing practical set of principles, structures, and tools for organizing groups and collaborative work. And it really was a nice opportunity to join them in this training. So we have a common set of vocabulary, common set of understanding, and it's really important in their work as they work with our teachers, our, our families, our students, and our staff, and really supporting our students with our 
most, um, our most needy students with social, emotional, and behavioral challenges. It was a great opportunity to get to know them and to work with them and to really look forward to um, creating action plans moving forward. Um, also participated in the New Teacher Academy yesterday and just want to continue with a nice shout out. It was great. It was good to see people. Um, people were energetic. They, they looked um, tired as we all do at, at this time of year, but also it was a great opportunity just to connect with everyone and really just share that we're here to support them in any way that we can. Office of Special Ed and Pupil Services continues to be busy, um, and we continue to plan moving forward and how we can help all of our students as well as our staff. Okay. Thanks. I know, um, I know I'm always looking for different groups of people to come in. Mm -hmm. I know we get to see sometimes the therapists when we're doing our building yep. tours and all that, but we're not always able to bump into them or that. Is that one of the group that we can ever like have in yep. to present? Sure. How many, I mean, is there a lot, is there, yeah. is there a lot of them? <laughs> We've yeah. got like a, a, one itinerant hearing specialist, you've got, you know, uh, uh, actually, I'm sorry, vision specialist, yep. I should say. Okay. Uh, so you've got counselors, social Maybe a few of the yeah. leaders would invite them all, obviously, because everyone loves coming to a board meeting. Sure. You know, sure. But I mean, just trying to think of different groups besides just like a high school or a yeah. middle school, like just some other categories. PTs, PT. mm -hmm. yeah. PT, yeah. PTs, yeah. We can maybe, certainly you know, maybe we can consider work, that moving forward for the talk for about the, the fall. Department. I mean, I'm always impressed when we visit yeah. the schools with what they do, but I feel like very limited chance to talk because we're sure. always moving along. So just throwing it out there to the board. Yeah. Or to you Absolutely. And the board, Matt. Absolutely. To consider Absolutely. that. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. We will move on. Now we'll move on to a on my way to K logo contest winner. This is very exciting. Um, how are we? Maybe just call him up. Uh, maybe take some pictures up here. You give him. Cool. Do we? Do we already know who is it is? Like, oh, he's here. Yeah, like he's he can be announced. Yeah. Um, let's Zachary. see. Zachary Waldreth. Would you like to come up? <laughs> You know what? Maybe uh, do we want to have uh, anybody, any anybody that you brought with you, any yeah, family or Mr. Galley or? Yeah, Mr. Galley. Yeah. yeah. Bring up. Maybe you can. Hello, Mr. Galley. <laughs> Miss Greenway. Miss Greenway, come on up. You don't get to get out of it. Hold on, wait. You're not done yet. You thought one camera was done? Yeah. You got three cameras. so dark under there. It is dark under there. Did the pictures come out at the end of there? Yeah, maybe they should come off. Yeah. I this will One more. Wow. 
That's nice. I love it. You know, Kim, I'm sorry we didn't put it up on the board. We were just talking about it. We should have asked for it. I don't know why. Yeah. Are we going to Probably post it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
am very small, but I have big personality, so uh, that's how, kind of how it works. Um, good evening. I am Carrie Kruger. Uh, I am a French teacher and department chair at East Senior. We are here tonight to talk to you about our world language program, and despite the um, large contingent I brought with me uh, this evening, we will be brief. Everyone is, is very excited to present their part of our program. So the world language program at East Senior, and it's mirrored at West Senior as well with the levels that we teach. We offer French and Spanish levels one through five. Uh, level three sophomore year is the Regents Equivalency exam. Uh, the state has left it to local um, districts to produce an exam that reflects the Regents and they get Regents credit for it. And we are one of the fastest tracks to a Regents with advanced designation. Um, so students going through their sophomore year, they get to check that box and they're one step closer to that, um, that, that Regents um, with that advanced honors on it. We uh, have a level four and five college articulation course with Hilbert College. Students earn three credits um, finishing with us. It is a 201 intermediate level course. So they blow right past 101 and 102. So for our students that are looking to minor in a language, typically they only need five more classes after that point um, at the university level to get a minor. We've had many students minor and major. We currently have uh, Dr. Skripchik at UB, um, who was one of our students, and he is a French professor there. Um, so we have a number of students who've gone on and done some, some wonderful things. We also have a dual language program, and we, all, we have students that take both French and Spanish. Uh, oftentimes, they get the regents in both. I have Sophia Furlong here who wants to tell you about her experience. Uh, hello. Um, the reason I began taking both French and Spanish is because I have a passion for the language, and the dual language program allows me uh, to indulge in the passion. Uh, one benefit of taking both languages is the knowledge of, of my knowledge of one language helps me in the knowledge of the other. Um, taking both also allows me to enjoy both cultures through, bo through both classroom experience and a variety of trips offered for both languages. <laughs> Like Mr. Winnicky said, we get out of the way when we've got our superstars. That's why we have them with us today is because these are our pride and joys and we wanted them to have the stage tonight along with us because it's more about them than it's about us. Mm -hmm. So in the world language area, we have brand new standards coming out. Um, the implementation for them will be starting in 23-24. And we are working very hard to, with professional development and other things to try and implement these. Um, it's not the language that you might remember from high school. We are more focused on communication than we are verb conjugation. And that is the main focus of these standards is communication. Anchor standard one is communication. Um, um, it's listening, reading, writing, um, but that's all communication. And our second anchor standard is culture, which is both um, understanding a culture as well as um, um, comparisons with products and processes. Um, so we are, we'll be rolling these out along the way. Uh, seventh grade starts in 23-24, so that's our new standards, and that's a big thing for us. Uh, 1996 was the last time that they revised the standards. Our French and Spanish clubs are very vibrant, and uh, the pandemic posed some some interesting um, constraints on our on our clubs who are used to going out and dancing and all kinds of things. But I have Aiden Kerr here, who is uh, one of our Spanish club officers, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about what our clubs look like. So, like she said, during the pandemic, it was difficult, but we were able to plan a lot of fun activities that also helped teach about like Spanish culture. We only could do online activities due to Google Meets being how we had meetings and that changed how we did things in the past. Some of the activities last year that we could do included like learning about an aspect of the culture, like the quiz game, other fun games like bingo, and then we got taught about Spanish foods along with easy ways to make them at home. But this year we're back in the class and in person, so it's kind of like the past how we were able to do it. But we managed online. We also offer French and Spanish honor societies. Um, currently, uh, we have quite a few students in there. We will be inducting new students 
in June, we'll be inducting about 50 of them um, into the, the, both the French and Spanish Honor Societies. In order to be in French and Spanish Honor Society, you need a uh, 90 average in world language, as well as an 85 cumulative average. Um, and you also need to take French or Spanish through your senior year. And we do all kinds of different opportunities to give back. We've done a Buckets of Love Drive for Journeys and uh, Refugees uh, services where we've collected cleaning supplies. Uh, we've done um, all sorts of things, including our World Language Learner Celebration. So um, Mia's gonna talk to you about this in a second. We were able to pause instruction kind of for a day and we brought out French and Spanish in all of our classes and we were able to do a service project as well. Hi, I'm currently a senior at West Seneca East Senior High School, and Mrs. Kruger, what she did for Learn Link World Language Day was offer hours for the Honor Society students, and I immediately jumped at that opportunity. Um, what we did for that is we, I went to the underclassmen classrooms that Mr. O'Donnell teaches, and we did multiple activities. For example, we did a bingo activity which had both French and Spanish words on it and what I did for that was help read off the index cards and walk around and check all their boards and then the next activity we did was a Kahoot which was just a bunch of fun fact trivia questions that had both French and Spanish and not to brag or anything but I did get in the top three for that. <laughs> um, and then the next thing we did was we did those Valentine's Day cards because this did happen during the month of February and we gave them to our senior center and that was definitely one of my favorite activities to do for this. Um, especially for the other kids as well because it did feel a little nostalgic because I think the last time I did a card like that was in elementary school and <laughs> so it's definitely nice to do a fun craft like that again and I know the people at the Senior Center definitely appreciated it. Thank you. Thanks, Mia. We were also able to donate um, some cards to SASE. Um, my husband happens to work for them, um, and they went to some of uh, the day programs, um, and they were able to give them um, Valentine's as well. Um, so that was, that was also where our Valentine's went. Uh, we have a life skills program as well at East. Um, we are able to offer an elective for our life skills students. You can see some of them there. I have them this year. Um, and uh, it's a lot of culture and it's a lot of pronunciation. Um, and it's just a heck of a lot of fun. We did Mardi Gras. Um, I dressed up with one of the students for Halloween. Um, so, so we just typically have a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to cede this part over to my colleague, Mr. O'Donnell, who's going to talk to you about our French exchange program. I'm short too, so this works. Thanks. I'm so lucky I get to work with Madame Kruger. She's fantastic. Uh, so since I believe it's 2009, was that the first picture we had? Uh, we've been running an exchange program with uh, schools in France. Uh, the first one was, was a collège, which is a middle school, but the kids are about our ninth grade age. And uh, we have students who come to West Seneca, West Seneca East specifically, although we, we do involve some of the West Side students as well. And uh, they, they stay with our families here. So we have, uh, most host families have one student, and I'm not going to steal your part, Paris. I won't talk about that. Um, and then the idea is that we go travel there. So we're traveling there next year in April, and we have students coming here this November. Uh, before the pandemic hit, uh, we were lucky enough to host uh, their superintendent, uh, for lack of a better, it's not exactly the same job, but it's, it's close. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually just got the nod to open up a brand new high school in, um, in Western France, in Brittany. And they have an American program, so they, they have kids focus a lot more on learning English. And those students are coming here in November, and they're roughly 16, 17 years old, so they're going to see how we do things. Uh, they're coming November 3rd. There's a Bills game, but it's not a home game, so that's really too bad. I just can only imagine those kids jumping through tables. and what that's <laughs> <happening>. <laughs> So I worked with my counterparts over there. We have Madame Collet is going to be the head teacher this year. And then on the, to the right of her is uh, my, my friend Madame Nicouet, who was a bit of a mother goose to me when I lived in France. And of course, Madame Kruger and Mrs. Sorensen helped a lot with this program in the past as well. We traveled to France together. Uh, but I'm going to let Paris talk about hosting French kids. 
Hi, I'm a little taller than both of them, so. <laughs> Sorry, not to flex. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I kind of got my thunder stolen a little bit too, so I'm kind of mad about that, but I had two French kids. I had twins. I am a twin. I have a twin brother named Gabe, and uh, we had twin students, boy and girl, like me and my brother, and uh, they were named Faustine and Robin. Uh, they were amazing to host. The experience is awesome, especially because I got to spend a lot of time with my brother. Even though we are twins, we are very different, and we got to um, kind of bond over having students that were twins also, because we, we were forced to hang out with each other for once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was very nice uh, learning about the French kids. They were very into basketball, um, so when they came over, we actually had a party for the final four. They came and they played basketball at my house. All the French kids, even some Spanish kids showed up, and it was, it was amazing because the kids, some of them didn't even know French, and they they learned and they spoke and we all hung out just like we were a bunch of kids and we were just hanging out and everyone was kind of like a big family and it was so nice to see that and um, I will just never forget we went to the Sabres game uh, one night we were like yeah we're gonna take you to the Sabres game and they were super excited and all they wanted to do was be on the Jumbotron these French kids <laughs> all they wanted to do so we all piled up in the stands a bunch of us um, and we were cheering and we were yelling and that moment when they finally got on there and everyone just exploded and they didn't they've never been never been to a hockey game before uh, they were very into basketball like I said so they had no clue what was going on but we taught them <laughs> we taught them about hockey and we taught them about um, what it's like being here and it was so cool even though having a language barrier the experience you got to have with them um, so that was really cool. Uh, I also got to go to Paris recently. <laughs> um, so it was amazing knowing I actually how to speak French there and I was in contact with my French students and I talked to them and they were very excited for me and I got to bond over that. They were like, oh yeah, I've been there. And I was like, me too. Look, we're so French together. It was, it was very <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but um, it was nice to see the familiar, the familiar kind of places in Paris um, that I learned about in class. Um, all the, you know, you see the Eiffel Tower or whatever, but all the kind of historical stuff. And I was like, Mom, I know this. I know where we are. And I got to speak and, like, order, like, a coffee. But also, like, when you're printing a boarding pass in French, that's pretty difficult. So um, knowing how to do that was awesome. And, yeah, so both experiences, going there and knowing what I was doing and also having French kids come into my life, and I will never forget the memories I made with them and the experiences that we have. Thanks. Thank you. We are beyond lucky that Mr. O'Donnell brought that program to us. Like, it's something that we can't, you know, we can't replicate. It's, it's just beautiful. Um, the New York State Seal of Biliteracy is, is where we're going to end up bridging over to Mrs. Sorensen um, after this point because we um, have, uh, we are offering the New York State Seal of Biliteracy at both East and West. Um, in order to do this, a student needs to demonstrate that they are at an, in, well, an intermediate high level of language. In other words, that they are close, they would be understood extremely well by a native speaker. Uh, to do this, they have to have an 85 or higher in both English and the target language. Um, we have someone here who has multiple of those um, as well. We also do this with our uh, ELL population who have to take special exams to prove that they have that grasp of language, that, that level of language. Um, those exams can take up to three and a half hours. Um, so this is, this is a heavy duty thing. And Mrs. Diagostino is the advisor with me for the Seat of Biliteracy. She's gonna tell you a little bit more about the capstone project that they have to complete. Hi, good evening. We have 14 students who success successfully completed the Seal of Biliteracy, and the students worked with us after school every day preparing, rehearsing, and we are so amazed by their presentations. Um, they had to work with us. We learned from interpreters, and we learned a lot from the students. We cannot be so proud of them. This is Dasha. Dasha worked with us and she completed her seal by literacy in English, Spanish, and Russian. Dasha? Yeah, so um, one thing I learned from the seal is how the process of knowing whether a person knows a language or not is 
much more than just being able to write or speak it. Um, it's also about comprehension, being able to answer questions in the best way possible, having the right tone, etc. And um, another thing I learned is how important knowing more than one language is. Um, not only will earning the seal look good for colleges and jobs, but also knowing more than one language is good for the brain for several reasons. And um, lastly, I would definitely recommend other students who are interested in other language to try to do the seal because with all the hard work put into learning a language or two, or just like knowing it from uh, family, um, earning the seal would definitely feel very achieving and it reflects them knowing a cool skill. Um, and lastly, we have Matthew Fincel. Uh, Matthew took us to school on the literature of Senegal. He did his entire um, presentation on the literature and the literary history of the country, um, and it was amazing. Um, and he's going to talk to you about his experience with the SEAL as well. We also have Paris and Mia who are also getting the SEAL by literacy as well. Hello. Uh, I was a little jealous of that gentleman in the bottom left of the screen there until I realized that he was me. So uh, I, I like his outfit and his beard, which I have seemed to lost. Now for this speech, I'm going to try to tap into my uh, inner Shakespeare to quell my nerves and also my handy dandy note card. So um, going into the Seal of Biliteracy program, I was just a little skeptical, but not because of the program, but because it was my senior year and I had contracted a very terrible illness called senioritis, I'm sure. You've all heard of it. And, um, but, but Madam Kruger, she encouraged me to, uh, to, to take up the program. And uh, because I'm so interested in Shakespeare and literature, um, uh, I asked her saying, okay, well, can I, can I do the presentation on literature? And uh, she said, of course, go ahead and do that. And um, then I, I started working on the presentation and because I had that literature element, I became very personally invested in this Francophone country, Senegal, that I had known nothing about beforehand. And it became sort of like this really personal experience where by being able to articulate how I was feeling about, all right, Senegal, this, 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 this person, that person, about their culture. And it, it really kind of changed me and, and, and it added to my perspective as to who I am in that sense. And um, Madden Kruger made sure that we were all on track for, uh, for making sure that you know, stuff in class was done and stuff after school was done. And um, it, when it came time for the big final uh, presentation, I walked into the room. I was, I was a little nervous, maybe like I am now. And I saw, I was like, oh, I'm going to see a bunch of suits there. All right, I'm going to have to be a little, you know, uh, I tighten up my tie. But I saw Madam Kruger, Mr. O, uh, Mrs. Bell, and Mrs. Diagostino. And that was, that was absolutely phenomenal. And it was such a, like a heartwarming thing to be able to express myself in a really accomplished way in front of my teachers in both uh, French and English. It was a little hard, you know, keeping the little switches. And I noticed when I was doing my English presentation, I would, you know, throw in a couple French words. It's very addictive to do. It's very fun, the little French words. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I was able to really just get super hands-on with the material. And um, it was such a, a lovely experience. And, yeah, I, I learned so much about a country that I, that I never thought I'd be interested in and let alone that I really didn't even know about. So now I know, and I'm very grateful for that. So thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ashley Sorensen, and I am the ESOL teacher at West Seneca East Senior. And I apologize because I did add slides, but apparently they were not uploaded. So um, I will just speak to you about my experience. Um, I've been in the district for 14 years, and I had the amazing privilege of working with all these people um, for seven years teaching French. I very much miss working closely with them as a department, but I do have the amazing privilege of working with Teresa Hongs, who is the ESL teacher at East Senior. And if you see her um, soon, please give her congratulations because she just won the Western New York ESL Advocate of the Year Award. So, um, and it's very well deserved, as you know. So, um, to speak about our program, we have about 25 students at East Senior that we are um, providing the program for a range of levels and abilities. They come from different countries. It's very diverse. And among those 25 students, there's over nine languages that are spoken. So they're coming from a lot of different places. 
Um, I have to say, working with the ESL students, especially these last two years, they have, in a way, been a saving grace for me during, during COVID because these students come every day ready to learn with a smile on their face. They love coming to school. I mean, and these are juniors and seniors, too, that I'm talking about. These are not little children. Um, but they just really understand the value of education. A lot of these students are coming from war-torn places. They've experienced things that we can't even imagine. And yet they know that getting an education and getting an education at West, Se West Seneca is going to provide them a successful future. So um, I, I really have enjoyed working with them. I also am here to speak to you a little bit about our international club. Um, we have an international club on both sides, East Senior and West Senior. At East Senior, we really highlight our ESL students. We highlight our diversity in our um, school district. And we have guest speakers that come, but we also have the opportunity for our students to speak. Um, every month we have a meeting. So this year I had a student from Yemen who gave a presentation. And I also had a student from Bangladesh who just gave a presentation last week with his sister. And I partnered with Andy Agostino and her Spanish advanced students. And we had a mini taste of culture, unfortunately, because of COVID um, protocol. I know that it's, you know, it's still there, although it's not um, restricted as much. But we just were nervous about doing a full taste, on, a taste of culture this year. But we're definitely hoping to bring it back next year. So we had a mini version of that with two guest speakers from Bangladesh. Um, I also brought in a friend of mine who is a Native American. His father is um, from the Onondaga tribe in Syracuse, New York area. And his mother is from the Shoshone tribe. And he spoke to my students about Native American culture. And I was also fortunate to bring in a student that I had previously as an ESL student from Ukraine to speak to our students about what was going on there and to talk more about her culture. Um, it's been a great program to provide for our students to expose them um, to diversity, to learning about new cultures. Our faculty is involved very often with these programs. And to couple with the world languages, it's just been an, an amazing opportunity to share that with our students. Thank you so much for your attention tonight. And if you have any questions, let us know. just extremely impressive folks I mean honestly I just uh, I mean you talk about diversity you talk about trying to open up people's minds you know and I, I have to say Ms. Kruger um, she actually we, so Mr. O'Donnell organizes his big trip so the one year when I was speaking to this this superintendent back and forth she was translating but it was kind of an involved conversation at one point she was translating in French to me and English to him there was a lot of confusion going on so but you should have won an award that night but honestly that just I appreciate everything that you're, you're all doing to really enrich our district. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's always great to hear from students. That's, that's what we're here for. Yeah. yeah. A, lot of, a lot of stuff goes on with the, the, I mean, my kids are on the west side, but uh, my top, my three oldest are all involved in French. Um, my two of them are going on a trip somewhere, not in America, like we're going to get passports and all that stuff. And uh, my daughter who's in eighth grade is in the French club. And um, I make a habit of playing the Friends episode where Joey tries to learn French and it really pisses her off. <laughs> um, I was a Spanish guy in high school myself. Uh, but anyway, I love it and I, I really look forward to the day. Um, one of my biggest dreams in, in life is being able to offer foreign language from kindergarten on up, um, that and instrumental. Those are my two uh, wishes if I had had that. And I, I think, it's, um, I think it, it's great for kids. My daughter, who is nine, is in Spanish club after school. She stays after school now. Mm -hmm. So however the district offers that, again, great. But it's great seeing you guys up there and all the different things that you guys are doing. It's amazing. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And now I'm also realizing none of you guys were the pig kids, and now my joke was even worse. So. <laughs> right? I thought they were I Yeah, at least say it's Spanish. Yeah, sorry. I just shouldn't have even done it. There goes the crowd. I caught that right. We were going back and forth. Oh, and she was standing the camera and she was speaking Spanish, French to me at one point and some English to him. Slow down, Karen. Our Rotary Club um, helped with that. Uh,
I guess you are. Um, Chloe was here. I mean, uh, uh, she was great work. Okay. Um, they help. Uh, they help pay for stuff for nice. the sponsor. Nice. She was. Uh, she had a great time here. Nice. So, uh, yo, you're just gonna you're make me call you up. You so we'll ride move. Ride. Up, we'll move. We're waiting for the palm fronds. <laughs> there are no palm fronds. <laughs> You're wearing the wrong color. Can I, can I save, save the best for my own? No, I won't. No, no. One of the two best. He's one still the, sitting there. I know, I know. I'm going to take a shot at him. <laughs> one of the two best. Top two high schools in Washington. Um, West Senior High, and you are presenting? We're presenting our general store and, our, and one of our programs in our building. Excellent. So a little bit of a duo presentation. Uh, this is our, our West General, we, we, we have something unique at, at our school and it, it's something that is cultural to our building. I think it's very West Seneca E too, if that's a word. Uh, this is our West General store and if you watched the news yesterday, we were featured on Channel 7. We got a phone call at noon. I went to Kristen Willman, who I'll introduce in a moment. She's really going to run the presentation and I said the news is coming in half an hour. I had no idea who was coming. They came with a camera. I'm like, oh my God, it's WKBW and with a reporter and they stayed for about an hour. They, they, the reporter was truly blown away and she, she was just watching the interaction with the students and the, and the program and the, the store and how everybody's working together and it was, it was awesome to watch and to see what other people see. So this is my crew. This is my 1211 program. Uh, these are my students. These are our students that run the store. So we want these students front and center. We want them interacting. Uh, many of them growing up have been in different programs where they don't interact socially with, with, the, with, with everybody else. Well, they're at the intersection. They're in the middle of the school. Every student comes by and, and sees the program and sees the store, interacts with the store. And I, I think if you look at how much money the school store generates, you'll see that it generates. And one of the things about the school store is every dime the students put in, we meet at the end of the year, we have a committee and we put it back into the, into the school. Uh, I know you just passed the uh, concession stand. I know we, did, we reduced some of the things like W's. I'm getting those W's through the school <laughs> store. I'm getting them. Don't worry. So I just want to show you some of the things that we've done in the past. Uh, it's not in taxpayer dollars. Students buy stuff, staff buy stuff, and then we put it right back into the school store. So I'm, I'm not going to be two hours and 25 minutes. I, it's, this is going to be about 10 minutes. I'm turning over to Kristen in about 45 seconds. All right. How do I turn? Am I in charge of this? This right here? Okay. Okay. So a couple of things that major purchases that the school store purchased years ago. I just want to update. Uh, years ago, I went to Brian Schultz, I need $10,000 in uh, treadmills, he laughed, uh, we went to a school store. Those are in the weight room. They benefit every student that goes into our school. Uh, what, I used to toggle together desks for a conference room. Tom Schreiber at the time just, we use a conference room, students use it. We have to be professional. Let's buy, buy a conference. So that's outside my office. We use it, students use it. We have students eating lunch there. Craig Ersin at the time, years ago, we want West Senior, when you walk into West Senior, I want kids to be proud. We all do. If you're proud in the building, you don't vandalize, but also you walk taller. You know you're awesome. You know what you just said, Mr. Obedient, best for last. I want every, no, I'm just, I, I'm just saying, I want every kid walking out of West Senior going, this was awesome. I love this place. Part of it is this. We outfitted, every room has... You know, it says main office, every, every room has a blue and gold, W's all over, school store did this. I couldn't come to you and say, hey, I need $8,000 for science. You would have laughed, right? Eight, bless you, eight times nine buildings, that's really what I'm asking for. Because you can't give West Senior $8,000 for science and not anybody else. So we funded all this. Uh, low everywhere, those signs, the West, Seneca West Athletics, we do that through the school store. And again, at the end of the year, we have a concession stand that we have to outfit. Uh, we also have a little weight room project that we're going to work on with the athletics. Uh, Kristen, I'm going to have you talk about some of the newer stuff. So I took over um, West General this year for the first time with my 1211 life skills class. I'm Kristen Lohman at West Senior. Um, some of the things we really wanted to do this year was 
things that could be for the whole school, fun things for the kids together. Because last year, kids weren't even in school for the majority of the year. They weren't together. So we tried to come up with some fun things that we could do running through the bookstore. One of the things we did was a mini Super Bowl party in my classroom. Um, here is a bulletin board from the room. Students throughout the whole school could come in and choose which team they thought was going to win. And then at the end, um, we took all the, the people that voted for the right team, put their names on like a little spinning thing online, and we chose one person to get a gift certificate to the bookstore. Um, we do a lot of gift certificates, which I'll get to in a second. But beside from that, we had like a little Super Bowl party in my room. Um, we had pizza and snacks and cornhole, and it wasn't just for my students. We opened it up to any of the teachers who wanted to bring their students down. This was really good for my life skills kids because even though they're in the bookstore interacting with all the kids on a daily basis, it's really just a quick, hi, how are you? What can I get you? Thanks for coming to the bookstore. So they had kids come down in the gen ed uh, population and they got to really interact with them for a while, play cornhole, eat food, have really good conversation. Um, I really enjoyed the Super Bowl party. I'd really like to have a whole school one next year when the Bills are in the Super Bowl. So uh, getting ahead of myself, but we'd like to do some more fun things like this. Uh, we also do a lot of gift certificates, like I mentioned. Um, we donate uh, gift certificates from the store to the Character Trade of the Month that the West Blue Committee does. Um, we did post-prom gift certificates. We also bought the big prizes for post-prom this year for... Um, for after junior prom, um, and basically anytime someone comes to us and says we need some gift cards, we're more than happy to give those um, in dollar values, in apparel, um, we just raffle things off um, for the glow party that our seniors put on, um, we did gift certificates for that as well. What was this, the junior post-prom gift? What was it? Yes. So there was, the, the big prize was a 50 inch TV, right. That's um, and we had also, wow. was you know, it a book? This was oh yeah, we had the, the big prizes, so all the kids that won were very happy. Did that one that was kind of open around at the end of the night, and Tammy Rice said, hey, uh, do you want anything? No. Well, guess what? You, did. you won 50. The kid just beamed from there. Right. So again, we're able to use this money to give it back to the students, um, do fun things for post-prom, um, like I said, the character trade of the month, Super Bowl parties, things like that. Um, we sponsor two students um, in the Students of Excellence Center. This is one of the students that um, I sat with this year. He is actually a student that works in the bookstore, even though he's not in my 12-on-1 class. Um, basically, in the beginning of the year, he just wanted to find something to help him work on money skills. Um, you know, when, I, when he got a job, working at a cash register, taking money, giving money back, making change. He, was, he came to us and said, like, what, what can I do? And I said, let's put him in the bookstore. That's going to be awesome. Um, he's had a, become really close friends with my students. He works in there with us uh, almost every day. Now he has a job, so he's not there quite, quite as often after school, but we're, we're happy he has a job. But um, we miss him at the bookstore as well. So we sponsor two students for Students of Excellence. Um, we try to also do some, some fun things to get all the kids involved. I'm going to go with, with Lucky last, but um, at Easter time, we raffled off six chocolate bunnies, a big one and then five small ones. All the kids had to do was come make a purchase at the bookstore. They didn't have to buy raffle tickets. Just anything you purchase, you can put your name on a ticket, and then we pulled uh, right before Easter break for the chocolate bunnies. Um, we did Guess the Candy Corn at Halloween. So the same type of thing, they didn't have to pay to actually guess, just any time they came and purchased something, they made their guess, um, whoever was the closest, somebody actually got it spot on, won the candy corn, um, also, again, a gift certificate to the bookstore. Um, you can see in the background some of the stuff that we sell, um, just, we do like little graduation things, we have little monkeys and stuff for, um, like little, with little hearts on them for uh, Valentine's Day. And then for St. Patrick's Day, we did Lucky. Um, Lucky was a leprechaun that hid around the school every day in March. Um, he would hide somewhere different. We would hide him in the morning, and the kids would have to find him. And whoever found him could come to the store, bring him to the store, and they would get a free drink, snack, and a little like West book bag that we had. Um, we did not think that this was going to be as popular as it was. 
Um, we had kids trying to like get out of class to go and find monkeys, they couldn't find them. I had four senior boys, football players, walking around looking for monkeys. So I had to make an edict. You can only look for lucky between classes. Which is why you can't get out of study hall. Fifty kids out of study hall looking for lucky. Which is why I said it might be one year only, but we we are going to try to respond well. Which is fine. Um, they had we, for lucky. They had a great time. They did. They had a they had a blast. Um, one day we couldn't find him. We found out he had been kidnapped. Someone was William hostage in their book bag until locked two. So the kids were very stressed out that day because they knew that he was out of his hiding spot, but they didn't know where he went. Um, I had to send emails every day, you know, Lucky's been found, you can stop looking for him. One really cool thing, though, that came out about this, um, one of the girls came to me at the bookstore the one day and said, has Lucky been found today? They would come up and ask, and we had a sign we would put out that said Lucky's been found. Um, and she said to me, uh, you know, my attendance hasn't been great this year. March has been the month that I've been in school the most because I want to come and find Lucky. <laughs> so if nothing else, we had one student come to school more to look for Lucky. So we just wanted to do, like I said, just fun things because, you know, it was, it's been a very different school year the past two years. Now we can be all back together, we're able to do these fun things. Um, we purchased a bunch of new apparel this year, um, and it, we had some old clothing that had been kind of like outdated. We went and purchased a whole bunch of new uh, West gear, one of the things we do is we give some of our apparel whenever we have transfer students coming in. We give them the new apparel to say, welcome to West, here's, your new, like, here's a home for you, we want to give this to you. Um, and we also will donate clothing to any families that maybe um, are in need. So we will always, people can always come to us and ask, you know, I need this, this child is in need of this, or we have a new student, we're more than happy to do that as well. You also took our slogans, we believe blue, go west and now every kid is walking around you know, in school with a shirt or a sweatshirt with their slogan on it. So that's what and staff. And staff. I have them and staff. Mm -hmm. and staff. <laughs> but that's key. We have a lot of transfers mm -hmm. and we meet with the, all the students that transfer in over the summer, the counselors meet and we're able to on the first couple of days of school we have a little luncheon, school store buys, a little breakfast and then we give them gear. We'll give them a pen, we'll give them a sticker, we'll give them a shirt. The kids are, I already got a last, I got to get a blind in. You're us now, so here we go. But Kristen's able to do that, and we're able to do, do that within our own school. Make these kids feel part of the school right off the bat. And our plans for moving forward. Um, we, our senior class does not have a lot of money because they didn't get to do the homecoming dance due to the fact that uh, of COVID, they didn't have homecoming the year that they sponsored it. We are going to sponsor the food trucks on senior day, which is June 10th. Um, I, I mentioned the prizes for post prom, the TV, um, signage for the concessions at the football field. We also, as Mr. Brinker talked about earlier on, um, came together last week after the tragedy that happened in Buffalo. And Rio Harden and I, who also runs a bookstore with me, we kind of got together that weekend and said, what can the bookstore do? How can we help these families in Buffalo, even just in a little way? So what we did last week was one day we said 100% of our sales are going to, we're going to find an organization and donate. We ended up choosing Feed More Western New York. We raised $1,700 that we gave to Feed More um, just in that one day. So kids were coming up, they were buying... We were telling them, wait to buy apparel until, you know, the next day, because 100% of the sales are going to go to this. Um, so drinks and snacks and apparel, they were staff and students, everybody was coming up. They cleaned us out. We had no food at the end of the day. Um, but we were able to raise, like I said, $1,700. Kids were coming up and just handing us money, too. Like, I don't even want a shirt. Here's a $50 bill. I just want to help. Um, and that's what the news came to talk about yesterday was this fundraiser. It showed me how generous our students are at West. Um, and I just felt really lucky to be part of such a good school and such a good community um, that everybody just wanted to help in any way. So if we have a student that needs a cap and gown, we go to the school store. If we have a student that needs a yearbook or a prom ticket, we know. We work with the counselors. This is what West Seneca does. We're not going to leave a kid out of the prom. We had a student that had a fire. Uh, we had to get some uh, gear, some apparel, some 
stuff for their home. So we, we get together and we're able to draw it out of the school store. This is what we do for the school, for the community. And again, the, the pride that the kids get coming into the school. It's part of everything. Everyone's part of this. And it's packed all in. All day. You know, except for lunch. You know, about to buy stuff the school store here at lunch. And, and everything that was just said, um, you don't hear curriculum. You don't hear things like that. Because at the beginning of the year, we really preach relationships before rigor, grace before grades, pro, uh, patience before programs, and love before lessons. Uh, that was a Brad Johnson quote that we put up in every room. And that bookstore is everything right there. The curriculum happens in the classroom. But watching these kids around that school store, when you're standing at the crossroads, and there's a line coming out because kids just want to be there. They want to interact. Those are the experiences they have. Lucky, they brought a kid there for the whole month of March. Guess what? Some learning happened there, too. And that's the thing that happens. And it's one of the greatest things at West is watching those kids go up there. And, I mean, that $1,700, I, I teared up when you hear that because it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable what West does. And it's all in West Seneca, too. And, and we'll welcome anyone. You have kids from East walking over and buying things as they're going through, too. And it, it's, it's just an amazing community that's created there. Um, and... You, know, you do a great job. The kids do an unbelievable job in there. Uh, and if you ever want to see it, come on down. You know, not just not during lunch. It's neat. Want to come get it? Come get it. <laughs> my kids are. They really. My students are really the heart and soul of that store. So come see them. They will get you whatever you need. They're really wonderful. Give Give ramen. Yeah. Um, we do. <laughs> I, I, I worked the concession stand at one of the track meets recently, and the big I couldn't believe ramen. Like it was just huge seller. Huge. Seller. It's really cool. And the hot pockets. The hot pockets. The hot pockets are big. No, the I lose the a ton of money. <laughs> so, do you have are the hot pockets? Do you have a microwave? We do. We have two yeah. microwaves, which the I forget about it. The school store bought two hot two microwaves for each cafeteria. So kids make popcorn, they nice. ramen, the regular lunches, they stand in line and do, nice. do their uh, warming up. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. That was Tom that purchased the microwaves to warm up the food. And we're, at, we're open after school too. So when the kids are there for you know sports or staying for clubs, they can come get a snack as well. And when it gets hot, she'll bring in all the fruity pops. So the kids come down, teachers go get freezing pops. It's 85 degrees right there. So, and then in the winter, it's hot chocolate. Every kid still hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. It's hot. Right. So, that's our program. Thank awesome. you. We love it. Thank you. We love it. Yeah. If I could talk about it for literally two hours and 25 minutes. I love that your 12 one not. kids do it, run it. it yeah, I love that. That's it's, awesome. And like I said, they get, then they get to talk to all right. the other kids mm -hmm. in school mm -hmm. and get to know them. Yeah. And everybody knows them. Mm -hmm. they, they work at the bookstore. Yeah. You know, so it's. It's just a great, great idea. idea. Right. I think you guys should hide something new every month. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> it said for my possibly one year old. Please do not let any 25 students from the hallway for lunch. <laughs> this is the time. Please okay, text sorry. Mr. Brinker your picture when you find him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had teacher, a substitute teacher's guy. Yeah. 15 kids coming up to him. We need to go find lunch. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 15 kids, 39, 45. Hey, they know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, lunch. <laughs> no, they know. It was like a sport for them. It was more than I can just get a free snack. They were like, I have money. I just want to find it. They get the, the, the bell ring. I'm like, it's here. Come on. Come on. No, they're from Lockheed. So, one year old. I was just thinking that. Mm. Oh, they did, and we hit him right, too yeah. easy at first, <laughs> yeah. so they found him right away. It was like the bell would ring at you know at seven twenty, seven twenty one, and the kids are ringing like you were like we have to, we have to really hit some better spots, which is what you know caused problems because then he was really hidden, yeah. and the kids were trying to find him. But they had fun, and that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And did you hide him in common areas? Yes. Yeah, so not in like yes. a classroom. No, it was okay. not allowed in any classrooms, any bathrooms. <laughs> it was only in areas where every student had access. To. Okay. So some days it was a little difficult to find another hiding spot just because it was either like in the it's open. It's like the shelf fell. Or we. <laughs> so that's originally where I had it from. It was like the elf on the shelf. Yeah. Yeah. When I was an elementary teacher. Okay. Also, um, this is only my second year in the district. My first year taking on the bookstore, but. Me being in the bookstore, I've really gotten to know a lot of the students. So I wouldn't have gotten a chance to meet so many of them if I was just in the classroom with my, you know, four students all day. 
Um, so I got to meet a lot of the students and I work a lot of the events, but really it's been the bookstore. Mm -hmm. um, people come up to me, and someone at the gym today actually came up to me and was like, hi, Miss Bookstore Lady, and I was like, oh, how are you? <laughs> so they do know me from being in the bookstore a lot, so that has been really great for me too, to get to know all the students in the school. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miss Bookstore Lady. Mm -hmm. You start any conversation with a kid about Oreos and what, you, what are you buying, and you get coffee, and it's, net, it's a nice little, mm -hmm. It's part of our school. Fielding yeah. off emails, why are there no Uncrustables? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why are you one minute late uh, opening today? Uncrustables <laughs> kind of have a crust on them. Well, they're, they're like, they put together. No, they are very hard to get in shelf right now, so when we get them, they sell out within the day. Uh, supply chain. Yep. Yeah. Next one. Well, well thank you for working with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, having. Having both high schools, yeah. having both high schools here, I, I failed to mention that I was, um, I was honored, uh, lucky enough to attend uh, dinner. Was that last week? The one at Salvatore's? Yeah. Yeah. Thursday. Um, last Thursday, um, where they honored the top three students Wednesday. from each. Wednesday. Thursday. 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 Yeah. Um, both, uh, both high schools had the top three students honored at Salvatore's at a great dinner last Thursday. I was honored to attend with both of them. What a great, what a great group of kids we had. I believe it's the top three, right? Yep. yep. Scholastic Achievement Recognition Dinner. Yes. It's the Erie Niagara School Superintendents Association puts it on every year. Yeah, it was great, and there was kids from all high schools throughout the the entire area, and it was it was a lot of fun. So I just want to congratulate both high schools on those kids. Um, they a great, great evening. Um, I think, I think we're good. We want to do our five minute recess and yes, then roll into our next group of stuff. Mm -hmm. All good? Okay. Yep. We'll do a five minute recess. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we're back. Yeah. Oh, just to say, if anybody's watching from home, the picture on the screen right now is this is Zach Waldorf's. Uh, that's the that's the image that's on the T-shirt. So the, for the kindergarten moving up to kindergarten transition program. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, that's the symbol that's or the, uh, the the picture that actually won the contest. It's going to be all of our T-shirts. So I I think the picture on the other side should be the one on the T-shirt. That's pretty, that's some excitement. He looks very excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah very happy. Okay. Thank you for the recess. We'll move on to new business. Um, if I can get a motion to move on 5A through 5C. I'll motion. Motion to accept. May I have a second? I'll second. Diane, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Move 7-0. Can have a motion to accept D. Five, I'm sorry, 5D. I'll or move. Mo motion from no. Diane to accept. May I have a second? I'll second. Jody, discussion on 5D? Anyone? All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Any, well, hold, let me do mm. that. All in favor, aye. 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 One, two, three. Those opposed? Nay. 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 Four. So the motion is not accepted. Three, two, four. I can have do a motion. If I can have a motion on five E, please. I'll move. P five E. Motion to accept five E. May I have a second? I'll second. Jan. All in favor. Any discussion on five E? Yeah, I just I just had a question about this. So. In looking at the contract, it looks like it's forty thousand for one year, not two. It's it spans the two years, so it's, it spans two school years. So it started like December and it goes through the follow like next January. Twelve months then. So it's a twelve month contract then. Yes. Okay. So we're voting to approve this now, even though the work has already been started. Yes, yeah, so they didn't have, and I, I know I'd mentioned this in an email, but it's basically they didn't have a, typically speaking, they would just give us an invoice or give a district an invoice. So we looked at it and said this looks more like it should be a contract. So the work had begun, 
uh, so that we went back. That's what I emailed. It just went back to say we'd like to go through the board process with this. So that's why I said, geez, you know what? This probably should have been something that should have been approved through a contract. So yeah, and then because of the amount too, the amount's quite high, you know, forty thousand. Yeah. So yep. Okay. But the work has already been started. And Correct. Right. We're on the hook for that work anyways. So okay. Any other discussion? Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Passes 7 0. Um, may I have a motion to accept 5F, please? Or may I have a motion on 5F? I'll move. Pete, motion to accept 5F. And I would like a second, please. I'll second. Joni, and some discussion? Any discussion? I thought they had a great presentation mm -hmm. when they were here. Okay. Yeah, okay, right. we have I think we have personnel that can handle that rather than go into this expenditure. Okay. Yeah. I understand that. And I, I, and, I, and I don't think our personnel, my opinion, couldn't handle it. I personally feel I want someone who's not involved in the district running the nuts and bolts of it. Um, that's why I support it, and I respectfully, you know, we can still be friends and disagree, well, but I do understand your, your point behind it. Um, I, don't I think... think, I don't think uh, the expenditure uh, should be made so okay yeah I understand that just um, you know my, my opinion I was on a committee where people from the district ran it and I don't think anything positive really came out of that so that's just kind of why I like having so and again they're not making any decisions they're just helping facilitate um, so just you know again I but totally does, get it money doesn't grow on trees and we have personnel that can really handle this so okay my comment I understand that's good um, any other discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I no, can I? I'm sorry. I didn't. Two? Aye. Two Aye. or three? Three? Okay. Those opposed? Nay. 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 Four? Okay. So the motion fails. Three to four. May I have a motion on 5G, please? I'll move. Diane, move to accept 5G. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll second. You'll second? Okay. And any discussion? Excellent. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Move 7-0. And I always get this wrong. Informational documents. May I have a motion for 6, please? I'll move. Pete, 6 Pete to accept 6A. And you may have a second, please. I'll second. Molly, 6A. Any discussion on financial reports? No. All do in we favor? Have to approve no, I don't think no. we do. You and I think I ask every time. Yeah. And yeah. You do. Someone you do. usually, I, sh I guess I should have turned your way, <laughs> Melissa. Yeah. Sorry. So then we'll just, all in favor, 7 0. How's that? Seven Seven more. Um, Board of Education discussion. We'll start with change the June 7th board meeting from East Senior Odd to West Elementary Gym. Mm -hmm. um, anyone got a problem? Like anyone? I'd um, actually like to also potentially change the date of the meeting. Okay, well, well, well let's start with that part and then we'll go into the date part. Um, I kind of pseudo requested this change, right? The Is date? this the one with the, no, not the date, no, just oh, the, yeah. The location. Yeah. Um, I kind of like the way we had our board meeting down in the gym, um, and this is where we do the uh, retiring, mm -hmm. um, the retiring ceremony for the people that are retiring. And um, when we do it in the um, East Senior Auditorium, we're up front at some tables, and the meeting part of it is very difficult. I, I personally, mm -hmm. we're not we're we're not having a we can't have a productive meeting facing out. The tables aren't really able to be curved a whole lot. Um, and um, I really like the way we ran our board meeting down in the gym that day so we could do our presentations. Mm -hmm. Then those people, we can have a reception with our little intermission, and then we can allow them to leave and go back and have our meeting. So that's why I, I requested the change. Um, like, just as, hey, can we talk about it? Um, and Nicole seems logistically it would work. So any anyone have an issue? 
No, I, I think I just asked to make sure that there was nothing going on with West Elementary that day, but I think that it was clear as long as the calendar is clear, we're not interfering yeah, with Yeah, I don't want to cancel something if something's right. on Right. No. I'm no. looking at the date right now. It looks There's like nothing. it's just West Middle and East Middle that have concerts. Okay. Great. Um, do we just vote on that or do we just... We vote, vote on that? We're voting to move no. the venue. Okay, vote to move the venue. Um, may I have a motion to move the venue? I don't, I don't think you have to vote. We're, on the vote no. on. we're just cool moving the venue. No, you just no. happened somewhere. Right. Anyone have an issue with it? No. We're good, okay. So now I will have Jody bring up some date changes she's requesting. Can we move the date of the June 7th? I would like to motion to move the date of the June 7th meeting um, as well as the reorganization meeting so that all board members can. Can we do them separate sure. so we can discuss it? Um, June seventh. Do we? Is that Are like you a, able to? With it being the retired, I, I was not aware that it was retired. The invitations are sent out. Um, I mean, you may just not get as many people there if they were planning on a particular date. That's all. So I mean, if we we can change the meeting. It's it's not. Can you a, change the meeting and not give them re recognition. I mean, I need to miss that, but I have to miss the June seventh. Yeah, I mean you can you can move it. I, I guess what I'm saying is you just you know I don't know how many people we have planned on coming to be quite honest with you. So and just you might just not get as many people. So you're mm -hmm. saying do the recognition but change the like have another meeting, is that what or you're saying? However it works best for everybody. Just the date is bad. Okay. For me and I would really like to be at that board meeting. So you're saying so just do the recognition but not do the meeting with like, you know, voting that? and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Is that possible? Is there, um, I'm, and I apologize. Is there stuff, is there stuff going on at the board? Like, is that a board meeting that we have a lot it's going on? It's a regular on? board meeting. It's a regular board it's a regular meeting, board yeah. Board so there'll meeting. be like agenda items and things like that right. for approval. Okay. Okay. Do we have a work session we scheduled do for the June? 21st. The 21st. The 21st. Couldn't mm -hmm. we kind of combine? Because or yeah, because so a work works. session isn't yes. I don't required think there's any time set. Yeah, I, I don't see why we could. But we, we could, could combine. the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. just yeah. combine the, even if we move it up a week, so it's in the middle if we had oh. to, or <laughs> the, whatever. The yeah. Well, the 14th is the baccalaureate. Yeah, okay. it's my, like uh, having a senior, there's literally something going on every yeah, single I'll, night. I, I don't know that, I'll, but I'll trust Molly that my kid probably. <laughs> it's every night. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm missing. Yeah. My, my schedule is just a red mark across the whole the, thing. So. The only thing I would say, there's only one item. It's actually a personnel item related to our new ELA director that we were looking to try to do the 7th. And that just the, the issue is going to be notice that they have to provide uh, at their current location. That's all. So they have to. I mean, they they have to give some notice officially in their current district if they're leaving. So this is related to the the new ELA director position. Yeah. So it'd be the seventh versus the twenty first. Yes. So, so it's that, a two week difference. There's there's nothing in this week that works for anybody. The eighth, the ninth. Can't do it. Well, could we do a? Could we hold a special? I, I was you. you could, I was just going to suggest have that one item on there. If you wanted to move everything off, I just wanted to say you yeah, could. Yeah, if we would just yeah. do that one item. That one yeah, item. I don't find the one yeah. item. Right. We could yeah. certainly do that. I don't, I don't yeah. think that's an issue. Then we can hang out with the people more with the recognition and everything yeah. too. Yeah. Just I mean, a short we meeting. Just do the one item, and then everything else gets put on the twenty-first. The twenty-first. Yeah. That would be fine with me. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. You'd be fine. You're willing to do that. Yeah. I would rather do that than move move it to a different day in the of the We week. just picked these dates so long ago and yeah. things come, you know. Oh, tell me no. about it. So, can That's we true. just approve? So what? As per June 7th, we can do that now, can't we? So you just have a resolution, yeah. I'm looking over Dr. Cervoni. I, mean, I think we could probably add it right now. Right just now. Would we want to do that, though? Uh, yeah. We could do a cert. Just push it back by two weeks. Yeah, I, I'm not uh, comfortable. We don't want to no, mess with like the yeah, like No, to I would work. rather I have it okay. on the, yeah. we could yeah, yeah. have a quick. Are you worried about missing the meeting or the retirement? Or both? The meeting. I think she's worried about I missing mean, the meeting. Obviously. Both. Both. both, both. both. But yeah. I, I retract that question. Yeah, please retract um, the question. I, I'm very sad to miss both, but. Yeah. I'm trying not to miss the I, I would just recommend if we could keep just that one item. Yeah. Just one item. Mm -hmm. That yeah. would be okay. We could do it like that. Just one item on it and then just do it next week. That would be great. Yeah. 
Everybody's cool with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So, yeah. Anything crazy mm -hmm. pops up, we can. So what? What is around. happening June seventh? So me. it's the, the retirement thing, and then probably one item on the agenda. Yeah. And I think the top ten we're going to come today. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, the, the top ten. It's a lot of recognition from each yeah. side of yeah. school yeah. are coming. So we're still going to have. Yeah. So it could be quite. Yeah. Good, yeah. It could yeah. be yeah. quite yeah. the party. Yeah. Awesome. All right. At six o'clock. Yeah, you've got a couple of students from the ASAP program. You're going to have, um, yeah, yeah sure. top yeah. ten. You're going to have retirees. So we always have a shorter meeting that night, anyway. I mean, uh, of business, you know, this. We try. We, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember we just went off to the side and <laughs> voted on something and came back. <laughs> so we still. Thank are, you guys. I appreciate oh, that. No, yeah. so we're still on on the seventh. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yep. And that's at six o'clock. Down in the gym. Mm -hmm. And it's the same setup as we did for the December 7th meeting, essentially. I mean, you have plenty of space down there to yeah. work with, so. Yeah, I thought that worked out well. Are we cool with that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I know you made a motion, but I don't think we need to follow no. through on it. No. I don't okay. Know. So there was a second. The reorganization meeting is scheduled and not all board members can attend. And I think we need all current and new board members here. So it's not me that can't attend this one, but I mean, well, it's Diane. But. I scheduled my Hawaii trip so that I could be at the reorg. So, <laughs> so, so just out of post, post, we are leaving the next day. <laughs> Did anyone ask Vince if he could make the reorg meeting yet? Is that like an official? Thing I think they no? know that when they're yeah. I didn't right? know what the reorg meeting yeah. was when I first. My, I came to the first board meeting after I, mean, I was elected. I'm just asking out of when I could pure come. coincidence. Yeah. Like, wouldn't it be funny if he's like, oh yeah, by the way, I can't. So you're leaving on the eighth. Right. How did you guys find out? But she's talking about oh, we having it on the first. She's talking on the first. Yeah. Yeah. Can we do it on the first instead? And you should be out of school. Yeah, they I have family coming school. into town to stay with us, but I can make that happen. We, do, we could do it at 9 o'clock in the morning. It's just a reorg meeting. That would be better. We need to call first? Vince? On the, yeah. What's the, I don't have Vince. Um, <laughs> okay, what Friday. is the first? It's a Friday? It's Friday. Because okay. we can't, I uh, checked with Jan earlier, we can't have it before... July, yeah, July right, yeah. with July. Yeah, right, and you have to have it between a certain it's amount like July, of time, right? right? The first ten days, or right? Something. The first ten yeah, days of correct. the month of yeah. So then it would have right. to be prior to. Or we could just all go to Hawaii. <laughs> yes. Or you could come to Italy with me. Those are two good options. So, my kids are going to Italy at some point. So the reorg is on a Thursday. <laughs> it, it was taking my kids, but so Thursday. Because the fifth was the reorg. The the yeah, that's yeah. always the trick here. It's always right. either before the holiday or after the holiday. So, but the reorg is Thursday. If we could do it Thursday. It's Thursday the seventh. Thursday oh, the seventh. That's weird. I know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Why don't did know it go? Why, why is it later this year? Because didn't we do it? I, I don't know who. Who assigned it the seventh? I don't either. We didn't talk about that. No. We didn't set it. Yeah, I that's why we did that way back in the very beginning. I know no, there's thousands we, of no, people watching right now. No, I think we should June. Okay. Tied their seats. Yeah. So can we move Will that to the first? Day. Can I check? Can I check with my family before I go to the July first, just in case I have family can we coming all agree in? That July seventh is bad. I do have family coming into town, so that's going to be a pain in the butt for me. Okay. Can we just can we discuss it further yeah. before we make? When do you leave, Diane? The fifth. So okay. Uh, so that I was going to say that fifth. Tuesday, but yeah. we're leaving that day. I feel like we talked about it because the fifth was the day after the holiday. I don't know. That was. Maybe we that might have been what it was. Maybe we yeah. did bump it because of the fifth because was there right now. Yeah. I feel like we had this conversation last we year. We probably in July, did. But now that who I'm knows thinking what of happened it. last year in July anymore? You didn't plan it for right. We did not. No. You guys just popped it on the calendar for us. I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa's <laughs> like, nah, I, mean. I know that last July I was saying to you guys, doing the reorg, saying, you know, we might have to do the you know, dates through the rest of the year, and I think you only got like two months out, so we did it at some point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Don't all right. Can we just dis like yeah. discuss this? Yeah. This isn't like this isn't rocket science. Yeah. We can all go back to our respective mm -hmm. things and, mm -hmm. and figure out what. I'm sure Nicole, if she's you know got some input on that too, and. But it has to be between July 1st and July 10th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That only leaves us like that's ten days. Yeah. Well, no, not even. 
That leaves us literally. I mean, we can do hey, it. You've been awfully here, quiet so on this. Five days. Don't, do that. Yeah. don't care. Right? I don't care. Do it. <laughs> it's actually five days. We could do it virtually. Okay. Is, there, is the reorg meeting where we elect like the new president and all that stuff? Yeah. There's a ton yeah, of stuff. I don't, don't want to do it virtually. It's I don't want to do it without one. everybody here. It's a huge yeah. one. Do, and do we have, I mean. Yeah. And I'll be at the airport. So. so here's a question. We have to elect that day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. the reorg. They they uh -huh. I just didn't know, yeah, yeah, I didn't know like if anything was happening that first week. Is that is that the rule? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. so I know we got to swear in and all that stuff. Like, yeah. But you have to. We take you know, our own. We swear Vincent. Diane, do you really feel it's I'm, important for you to I'm be there? I'm more than happy I don't to. Care. I really don't care. You know? Okay. Because the reorg is just, you know. I mean, it would be nice to be well, here. Well, would you be able to, like, leave, like, committees that you wanted to be on? Any intentions that you had? Like, could we do okay. that? Yeah. Yep. Do that. <laughs> tell them yep. what you're willing to accept and mm -hmm. uh, like committees, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, because if we yeah. if you have the agenda and we mm -hmm. know what and I know it's ahead of time. What you know yeah. it's ahead of time. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that, we could so. do that because then that. you'd be Yeah. I mean, because most of it is just I was you know, in at one o'clock in the morning and then yeah. gonna come here, you know, whatever. But. Yeah. It's too bad you can't the lawyers, be a, like, right. um, you know, you appoint you know well, form or something yeah. like that with yeah, technology. And we things, probably you know, could. It seems like it would be a no-brainer. You know, yeah. I could yeah. work that form. out, I guess, <laughs> ahead of time. <laughs> I'm kidding, not me. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Yeah. I attended yeah. one from Cape Cod, I remember. Yeah, and I remember. I well, wasn't on the door. Meeting but. Board meeting for what's yeah. yeah. No, I think that was a retreat, wasn't it? Didn't, um, no, yeah, I remember my back was out. Yeah. Yeah, no, Mary Bussey like had beamed in one. Yep, yeah. too. She from, like, I remember. Trip yeah, to Florida. I remember that. Yep. Remember but that. I'll be in Rome, and so that'll be six yeah. hours difference. No, and that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's an interesting board meeting. Well, I'm in Rome. I'm at the Rome, Vatican Museum, and so it's a long one. Oh, too. Diane can yeah. vote with the white and black smoke through the. <laughs> oh, that's the Pope. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. Oh, and, uh, hey, we're not that important. Just trying. <laughs> no. Okay, so we're gonna all we're just kind of we're pretty sure that we can leave it, but we'll all just double check and. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank and you. Again, I know the audience at home is riveted. Thanks for the vote. Um, was that? Was there any other yeah. items that anyone wants to discuss? Do we know what time the reorg is going to be? No, there for six o'clock. I think it's scheduled for six as of right now. Okay. Do we do what? We don't do that earlier. Is it the employee recognition that we do earlier? Is yeah, that? I thought it was the employee recognition. Maybe that that's was an at hour five, earlier. five o'clock. Yeah. Five o'clock. Is that what it's scheduled for? And I'm just not it's, remembering. It shows six o'clock on the board calendar. Okay. Yeah. I'll clarify that. I, well, the board calendar is the board meeting at 6. Is the recognition held before the board there's meeting? There's no recognition no. on there uh, other than the board no, meeting. I, I think we do it a little. Melissa, I thought it was 5. Do you know, do we normally do the... the, uh, the, Man, the, the uh, just coming really off this meeting. Do. I think we start it earlier. It says 6 yeah. o'clock in my little calendar. Yeah, I'm good either way. I just, I'm just trying to think of what we've done historically. It doesn't matter to me. But, yeah. 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 Well, now I, there's one agenda. I well, I was going to say, there's not as many right. agenda. I don't think it matters as much, but I just... There was a stack of them. I just signed a whole bunch. Of them. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. There's a there, there's a fair amount. I, I, I more. I would think more than twenty. See, yeah, total. That's not that. That's among all all groups. Thank you. Yeah. That includes CSEA and all. Yeah. Oh, that's everybody. Right. Yeah. It's not just teachers. Maybe a little more than that. I think there's probably closer to thirteen. I want to say. Good. Good. Last but not least. Tomorrow night is that little graduation ceremony at West Senior. It's really nice. The mm Academies. -hmm. I'll be there. Yep, I will. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Tomorrow night. And I will throw it out there. There was a really cool presentation by the Academies, um, the Engineering Academies. Um, it was like their thing. And I did not attend, but I was asked to not attend by my son. And I had really 15 cool. to 20 different people like reach out to me. Was everything okay? How come your son did great? I'm going to put it out here to the public. 
He preferred us not to be their first presentation, so we respected that. But I had a lot of people concerned about the fact that we weren't there for him. So I mean, this is a personal thing. Yeah, I'm just going to throw up. Yes, was, Jen. And, and thank you for the photo and everything. I do appreciate that. <laughs> no, thank you. But I did have people concerned, like, oh, my God, you guys missed this. And I'm like, no, he was very nervous. And Aww. so apparently I make people nervous. Um, but, yeah, I can't wait for tomorrow night. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Okay. May I, have a mo uh, may I have a motion to move to executive session to discuss collective negotiations pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law? I'll move. Pete, okay. move to do that. Jody, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? And uh, just to let everyone know that we will not be conducting public business when we return. We will just be adjourning. So thank you, everyone. Have a great night.